Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Britain's anger at EC opposition to restrictions on migrant benefits. Russia seeks visa-free travel to the European Union. And EU court stands firm on electronic sheep tags. BMW money bags accused of bankrolling Merkel's party, plus city politicians nail their colours to the mast over European Union membership. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The study, whose details were first disclosed in the Telegraph, showed that more than 600,000 non-active EU migrants were living in the UK at a possible cost to the NHS alone of £1.5 billion a year. But the EC reports main conclusions that the impact on the welfare state and on the NHS is very low are now the subject of intense debate in a series of developments. I think that to date, the nightly news has demonstrated beyond all doubt that the kleptocrats in the ivory towers of Babel in Brussels, quite simply, are living in another world. With massive state benefit cost increases, oversubscription to NHS services, rock up to your nearest A&E and ask them what proportion of the services are dedicated to migrants. How about schools? We only reported in August that primary school places were oversubscribed by more than 3,000. And that number was set to grow massively as there is a boom in migrants' children reaching primary school age. Migrants, Brits or others, makes no difference. We have reducing public expenditure, which means reducing services. And yet we have a growing population requiring state services such as health, education and social welfare. <laughs> Go do the maths. This equation does not balance and cannot be balanced under current policy. Globalisation has remained a major trend in international politics for years now, with more and more opportunities for nations of all regions for cooperation, coordination and regional convergence through free visa regimes and tax relaxation. Russia is making efforts to take full advantage of the globalisation process, uprooting the barriers of all sorts one by one. The Kremlin seeks short-term visa-free travel to the European Union from next year, and Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister, Alexei Meshkov, said that the deal, however, requires the EU to make a political decision to begin negotiations on drafting the agreement, and Russia urged Brussels to begin work on drafting following a Russia-EU summit in December. Now, for clarity, following our first story, visa-free travel does not provide free movements right as seen in the Schengen Agreement, but it does mean more tourism and potential trading made simpler and easier. A German sheep herder must comply with EU tagging requirements aimed at protecting the world from foot and mouth disease, Europe's High Court ruled. Up until a major outbreak of the disease in 2001, the EU required sheep and goat herders to mark their animals only with an ear tag or a tattoo. During the outbreak, officials slaughtered millions of untagged animals that they could not trace to their owners, only to discover that 80% of the animals were clean. Now, I had a long discussion with a Welsh mountain sheep farmer, and take it from me, the Welsh folks know plenty about sheep farming. He explained that these electronic tags are useless and expensive, and here's why. One, the software doesn't work reliably, and very often the databases don't get updated from the RF readers, which are the handheld electronic devices that read the tags. Two, the working environment means the requirement for ruggedized equipment, which is expensive and still gets destroyed easily. And three, the tags don't work reliably. Finally, he went on to say that simpler numerical ear tagging or tattooing had been working successfully even in the most challenging sheep farming environment of North Wales. However, if you're the company with an EU patent on electronic animal tags and the supplier of hardware and software, then being chums with a few friendly kleptocrats could put you on the road to your own yacht. So go figure.
The fact that German Chancellor Angela Merkel's Christian Democratic Union received a large donation by one affluent German family is not new. But the fact that this family owns almost half of Germany's luxury automaker BMW and that their generosity coincided with the government's decision to block new curbs on CO2 emissions for big cars in the European Union could be a scandal in the making. Could be a scandal in the making. It's clearly a well-rounded, fully formed scandal. How can it be democratically representative that a political party can be funded by a private corporation? This highlights a key problem with the Western idea of democracy. In the background, the strings are being pulled by the size of the coffers of the corporations that fund the campaigns of the parties, and those funding programmes come with hidden clandestine agreements. Whilst such mechanisms are accepted, there will never be true representation for the people. A bill to give British people a vote on whether to stay in the EU moved a step closer. The European Union referendum bill, which will allow an in-out ballot before December 2017, returned to the Commons for a debate. The bill was steered through its detailed scrutiny in committee by South West Devon MP Gary Streeter. Mr Streeter, who as committee chairman is not allowed to vote on the bill, told the Herald during the debate... I am totally committed to a referendum. It's time the British people had a say on the future of EU membership. <laughs> well, frankly, it's not time at all. It's late. Very, very, very late indeed. Here at the unit, we are beginning to feel that there is potential for a criminal case for treason that could be brought against a number of successive politicians and civil servants. We are far from alone in that view. Watch this space. Today in our video library, so on the footnote of the previous story, how come we are concluding that our political leaders have committed treason? In a nutshell, the British constitution expressly forbids that the British people be ruled under law by any foreign power. It expressly grants rule of law to Parliament and the King or Queen. In signing the Lisbon Treaty, Gordon Brown and David Miliband both committed the act of treason. Well, how so, you ask? Well, the Lisbon Treaty contains a supremacy clause, and indeed this clause is mentioned in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048, which you can download from our 1972 et al. section of the website. Now, this clause says that where a national statute conflicts with the European statute, it is the national statute that must give way. So, it is stating clearly that EU law has supremacy over national law. In agreeing to such legal hierarchy, Brown and Miliband committed treason. Well, we feel, for certain, that this would stand the test of a jury, and we also feel that there are likely many others who have committed such crimes. In today's video, this short film, of just under three minutes, demonstrates this point with absolute clarity. So what does this all mean for us average folks? Well, as subjects of Her Majesty the Queen, we are at liberty to defend our nation and, under law, we are empowered to defend our constitutional rights. That means that when you choose to stand up and speak out, you have the full force of Queen, Country and Constitution on your side. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>